Welcome to Wind Down Wednesday. Here are your hosts, Jeffrey Tobias Halter and Amanda Hammett. Well, good afternoon. Today we are talking to Judy Hoberman about sales and leadership. My name is Amanda Hammett, and today, today is a rehydration day, so I've got my good old glass of water. Jeffrey, how are you? And what I'm are doing you great. doing today? I am enjoying a nice uh, Sav Blanc from uh, the Bordeaux region of France. Oh. So, uh, you know, we're into it, we're into that weather when you, you know, I can't can't drink uh, drink the heavy red stuff. So, we, so we're shifting with wine. That's so, uh, but um, it is my absolute pleasure to introduce an old friend. Uh, Judy Hoberman. Judy is the president of Judy Hoberman and Associates, a company focused on empowering professional women. She's an award-winning international speaker, best-selling author of four books, trainer, and leading authority on women in leadership. Uh, she was a TEDx speaker about prejudging people. She's the author of four books, as I said, including Selling in a Skirt, which we're going to talk about in a minute, and Walking on the Glass Floor. Judy's mission is to help one woman a day by following an important philosophy. Women want to be treated equally, not identically. Judy, I love that. Welcome to Wine Down Wednesday. I'm so Thank excited. So Thank before you. we get started, what's your beverage today? I am drinking smart water because I truly believe it makes me smart. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That is so great. And it's a former Coca-Cola product. So we got to love that. There you go. Uh, Judy, it's been a while since we've talked. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I had the privilege of meeting you over 10 years ago. Judy and I share a passion and it is about getting more women in sales. Um, we both believe sales is a route to the C-suite. You get P&L responsibility. Mm -hmm. um, talk to me about the work that kind of brought us together 10 years ago, as you recall it. As I recall it, <laughs> um, the very first time I met you in person was in Dallas and you were speaking. And I came to see my celebrity crush because I had such a crush. On, I did. Every time I would see you do something and post something, I'm like, oh my God, he's so amazing. When I heard you were going to be low, Local. I, I came with friends. I'm like, I can't go by myself. I just can't do that. I need a second. <laughs> Hold on. I need a second, Judy. Really? Oh, oh, okay. For real. Oh, oh, I can't wait. I, I never told I never even told him that. <laughs> I, this is new news to me. I would not yes. have given you that lead in if I know had known it would be no, you wouldn't you know, have. gushing about me. So yes, thank and then you. and thank then he asked so for much. questions, and I thought, oh my God, I have to think of a question. I had nothing. There was nothing in my mind, but I had to ask a question and I did, and then we took a picture together. Oh my God, I was like, that was it. I could have dropped the mic right then. <laughs> For the audience that cannot, that is listening and not watching this video, Jeff is about three or four shades of red, right? Now. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay, Judy, I'm so sorry. Please go ahead. Anyway, so we have, we do have a passion about women. We really do. And what was, was great about it, as I was listening, I had to like close my eyes so I could listen because I just couldn't watch him speak. I wasn't, it wasn't, you know, getting through to me. So I, I closed my eyes for a while. Um, all kidding aside, I really, he really is my celebrity crush. Um, but the truth of the matter is we want to make more women get into that level of leadership whether it's sales and leadership or leadership and sales, because it's like a hand in a glove. You know, you can't be a great leader if you don't know how to sell and you can't sell without being a great leader. So we really do um, combine the same philosophy. And so that was how we actually met in person. But we've been following each other and we've been sharing information and we've been, you know, doing, you know, small things together that turn into big things. So it really has to do with women. You know, people always say to me, well, what should I listen for? I should just listen for the word women. And then, you know, that's what I'm interested in, you know, because there's so many things we can talk about so many different directions. Well, that's, um, that's really interesting. And thank you for sharing that. Um, and, and You're still laughing. <laughs> just thank you just a little bit for just embarrassing Jeff just a little bit. He's squirming just a bit. <laughs> I, I love this. Oh, I love wow. It. Just keep bringing it. Just keep bringing it. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. I'm done. I'm done. Okay. But, <laughs> you know, I really, I really enjoy this kind of conversation. Uh, all, all kidding aside on poking with Jeffrey, you know, what? let's talk about your clients and the work that you're currently doing. And I would love, 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 love.
love for you to share a success story with the audience. Yeah. So mm-hmm. that my clients are generally women. Even when I my messaging is to women, I always get men to show up. And the reason is because they want to know how to work with women, how to lead women, how to be led by women. You know, so if you can, you know, consider that as an asset rather than a liability, we can work together. So what I do is I'm an executive coach. I do uh, leadership and sales training workshops. Um, I'm a keynote speaker, but it's always about the messaging about women. And most of the time, um, you know, as well as I do, Amanda and Jeffrey, you may not be able to say yes or no to this. Women don't like to ask for help. They just don't. And so when somebody comes to me and says, when they hear my mission is to help one woman a day, women will raise their hand and say, can I be your woman today? And to me, it's very humbling. So when I bring women into my programs or when they hire me to do coaching, it's it's really a powerful relationship because they know where I stand and I know where they stand. So um, a success story that, I mean, there's a lot of different success stories, but I have one where there was one of my clients decided she was done with corporate, just done with it, didn't want to do it anymore, and just wanted to be an entrepreneur. She had a very high level position. And so the first question I always ask is, are you leaving money on the table? Because just to jump with no reason and, you know, nothing bad is happening. You just don't want to do this anymore. And she said, yeah, she was leaving, you know, close to six figures for a bonus. And I said, okay, when is that? She said in eight weeks, I said, good, we're going to stay for eight. We're going to stay. You've already earned it. It's from last year. So we're going to stay. But what we did was we we came up, up with a plan of attack, how we were going to do this and so on. And so this was in April. She wanted to resign in July. And so we moved the, if she wanted to resign in June, we moved it to July and August. So resignation, August, we worked out the the details and everything and everything was great. Her goal, her goal was to get her first paying client by the end of the year. So now we're in August, September. So by the end of the year, one paying client, which is not hard to do, but when you're starting from scratch, it's not the easiest thing. Long story short, October, she calls. This was the call. Hey, I just want to let you know I got my first paying client. Now, here's the blah, 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 blah. I'm like, wait, what? And she said, I got my first paying client. And I said, okay, stop right there. Just stop right there. What was your goal? She said, December. I said, and where are we? She said, October. I'm like, "Mm, yeah, thank you. Did something really great. You know, is it something you can repeat? And she said, I said, we need to celebrate. She said, celebrate? She never celebrated anything. And so even if she just went, woohoo, I mean, that was a celebration for her. And it was just, it was so funny to watch this unfold where she had no idea what to do because she did something extraordinary in her eyes. So, I I mean, there's so many little stories like that. There's big stories too, but that one always makes me smile because it just, it was such a big deal and it was really something really little, but those little things turn into those great things. Judy, I actually have a couple questions. One, I want to go back to a comment you made when we started about this notion of sales and you're always selling. Mm -hmm. And I think that comes from business maturity, Mm -hmm. you know, just realizing the higher you go in an organization, you might be in a staff function, but if you're needing people or resources, you're always selling. So I'd love to maybe get a success story of either uh, one of your clients who had an epiphany around selling or not selling and, and what that looked like. And then I want to dig into it's 2022. We're post COVID. What have you seen change in the last few years? Okay. So the first part where you're always selling is you're selling a position, you're selling a project, you're selling an opportunity, you're selling all of these different things, but more importantly, you're selling yourself. And so I don't care what anybody says, we are always, always selling. And one of the stories is, you know, a woman, again, obviously women with a very high, 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 high position um, did not believe that she had to sell. And I said, so how do you bring people in on your team? She said, well, I hire them. And I said, do you have the last word? She said, yes, I have the last word. How do you describe it? And she describes it. I said, so I'm your person right now. Tell me what this job is about. And I'm asking her questions and she's t- giving me the responses. And I said, okay, so you just sold me on this. She said, no, I didn't sell. I, I gave you the, the description of what was going to be the expectations. I said, yeah, you just sold it to me. And she said, oh. I sell every day. You know, it's just funny. It, there's also where I was sending books out. It was a couple of years ago on during the holidays and I was in FedEx and I had all my cartons there ready to go. And the, the young man that was always taking care of me, he said to me, what you got today? And um, now remember, my company is selling in a skirt. And so I always wear a skirt, but it was snowing. And I had, you know, like uh, sweatpants on and a baseball hat and the place was packed. And he goes, Yo, selling in a skirt. Where's your skirt? Just like that. 
And I looked around, everybody's looking at me and they're looking up and down. And obviously I'm not wearing a skirt. And I said, I'm not selling today. He goes, oh, no, 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 no. We sell every day. Remember that? We sell every day. So it came right back to me. Oh, and I thought, I thought, you must have taken one of my books out of that box. <laughs> So yeah, I mean, so it happens to yourself, you know, because you don't even realize it, but it's fun when it happens, when people really get what you're saying. Yeah, absolutely. So what's different today than three years ago? You know, let's let's talk about your work um, post COVID. What and, and realizing we're still a little bit in COVID. Yeah. But yeah. what shifts have you have you seen in the last couple of years? Well, just like everybody else, March 13th, 2020 was a big day for anybody that was in any kind of business or life. You know, really it was everybody. And when I left the house that morning, my calendar for 2020 was jammed already. And I was so excited excited. I mean, it was speaking, there was training. And when I came home that day, there was nothing on my calendar. So for me, it was um, a big, big deal. And my word for 2020 was shifting and who knew how relevant that was going to be. And I remember giving myself permission to go to bed to cry because that's what I did. But I gave myself permission after 20 minutes to get myself up and figure out like, what are you going to do? You can't lose your company. I mean, I worked too hard for it. And so I realized that my coaching had always been virtual anyway, because most of my clients were not local. So that was no big deal. But I had to come up with different ways to bring women back into the fold because business was changing. You weren't doing things face to face anymore. And that was a scary part. So I created roundtables, which were groups of women that would meet and talk and become like each other's personal board of directors was never on my radar. I created um, the exceptional panel, exceptional women panels for women, where we could talk and bring other women in and listen to what was changing, not what was me or anything like that, but what was changing and how you're doing business. So I created all these other forms of connection. And they're still in, you know, going today, because they did really, really well. Now, my clients, on the other hand, they were freaking out because how do you do business if you can't talk to people? And I would ask them one question. When you see somebody in person, do you automatically whip out a contract or an application? They go, oh, no, you know, we have coffee and we talk. I'm like, okay. So then you invite somebody for a virtual coffee, 15 minutes, just get to know somebody. And they said, you could do that. I'm like, yeah, you could do that. But I found myself having to basically like train people how to do a Zoom call because nobody did it. We didn't have those things. I mean, it wasn't part of your everyday business. So we did a lot of that. So they were comfortable and they would do test runs and they would call me and say, can I just do one now? And, you know, and, and so for 10 minutes, we'd be on and, and we would adjust this or whatever. So it changed in that respect, but business didn't really change as long as you were comfortable talking to people like this. Today, everybody thinks everything's back to normal. I've already had two speaking engagements cancel because they're not ready. They thought they were ready, but they're not ready. So we're back to virtual, you know, who knows what day it's going to be when everybody says, okay, let's do this again. So things change, but things happen. Interesting. So if we're leaning into, into your insights and, and everything that you've learned through this process, what advice do you have for millennials, Gen Zs who are looking to make their way in the business world through sales and leadership? The biggest thing is, well, there's two big things. Number one, know your why. Why do you want to do this? Because you cannot go into sales or leadership without a why. You have no, I mean, what's the point? Know your why and, and have that in front of you all the time when things are good or bad. So you should know that. But the second thing is get a mentor. Find somebody that you can talk to. And it doesn't have to be this, you know, official program where, you know, it, it's not that. I would say, you know, Amanda, what you do with when you close sales, it's just so effortless. Can you show me how to do it? There you go. If you say yes, you've now mentored me. If you say no, you're not my person. If I said to you, Jeffrey, what's the difference between the way you close and the way Amanda closes? Can you show me how to do it? It's, again, it's just you find somebody that you admire, tell them why you admire them, and then just ask because it's really difficult to do this by yourself and you shouldn't. It takes a village and we all need each other. I mean, I have at least two coaches all the time, male, female, because I want the different perspectives. I I personally think that if you don't invest in yourself, it's not nothing's gonna happen. You cannot do this by yourself. You might be one of those lucky ones, one in a trillion. Go, that's awesome. And I'm excited for you. But the average person, even the above average person, everybody has a coach or a mentor. So that's what I would say, especially with those that are just coming in, you know, you don't try to do this yourself. You know, that's Agreed. what I would say. Agreed. Very much agreed. 
there's never enough time. Um, and so uh, we're going to wrap this up, uh, but we're going to invite you back and uh, we're going to have you in for a future episode. But Judy, so good catching up. Thank you for sharing your, your hard won wisdom about what's going on and, and where, the, where the marketplace is really moving. Uh, for more information on Judy Huberman, her work, her books, and so much more, visit her <laughs> website, Selling in a Skirt. Dot com, literally my the the favorite name of, of any website of any of my of my peers that I share. Judy, thank you from the bottom of my heart for uh, uh, for being a fan and uh, being a big supporter of my work. So oh, thank you, uh, really thank appreciate you. it. Thank you, and keep our little secret to ourselves, okay? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> thank you, Judy. Thanks, Amanda. Thanks again for joining us for Wine Down Wednesdays, a contemporary midweek discussion on current workplace and marketplace issues with a focus on diversity, inclusion, intersectionality, and equality. I'm Amanda Hammett, and on behalf of myself and Jeffrey Tobias Halter, thanks so much for joining us, and we'll see you in the next episode. Thank you for joining us for Wind Down Wednesday. If you like this episode, please subscribe to receive more episodes straight to your inbox.